Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God, pillar and ground of truth. Hello. And to all my many enemies out there, I, <laughs> it, um, it, uh, it's interesting to recognize and realize just how many people really dislike me. I, I find that very <laughs> oh well. If I, you know, if, uh, if I were one of those guys who gets upset about that, I guess I would be in a corner sucking my thumb. But uh, anyway, anyway, you know, I have learned over time when the Lord will open a door and glorify Himself through a, um, a vessel of earth. Uh, usually he allots for the devil, or a devil obviously, to kick you. Especially, especially with myself because, um, you know, that scripture is like, um, if, if uh, I'm bradizing this, you help someone in the Lord, uh, remember yourself so that you don't get cocky yourself. That's, that's totally not <laughs> of the scripture itself, but... More or less, a uh, brother could help me out in the description, in the comment section with that. But, but I've learned that when the Lord has used this vessel of earth, and even my wife and I together, to present the true gospel, to present the true, real Jesus Christ uh, contained in the authorized version, usually there's allotment for a kick that comes afterwards. And it's, it's interesting uh, what was it, last week uh, on Friday, uh, the Lord used us. I talked to you about this, and then some nitwit came out and whatnot. And I have learned when you are being attacked, attack back. But also remember the head of the snake, the head of the serpent, I should say. The head of the serpent. Okay? Remember that. Because a lot of what you and I deal with are the body of the serpent. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of Hylos. And what a winky dink, we're going to read that this morning. It's still morning here, okay? But you got to remember, I have to remember too, that a lot of these people that we uh, deal with, um, they are the symptom, the symptom of the problem. And what is the problem? Rome! Rome is the problem! Rome is the problem. From, from whatever heresy it is, from Calvinism to Roman Catholicism in and of itself, horrible, uh, and all the other flavors of uh, heresy out there. Rome is the problem. But guess what? You dear Catholics, and we're going to address this today. Um, Rome loses. Rome loses. Catholicism loses. <coughs> Roman Catholicism will be destroyed eventually. Okay? The end of our faith is come up hither. That's the end of our faith. Okay? Because faith is null and void when you can see the guy. Okay? That's how that works. Alright? But the end of the faith of the Catholic is death, hell, and the grave or the actual destruction of Babylon which will be coming. Which is coming. But today is the 20th. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please read along with me in the scriptures that we will be reading today. Read along with me word for word verse by verse of what we will be looking at today. The Iberian. The Iberian. Read along with me because the mouth goes quicker than the brain and vice versa. So get the scriptures, the authorized version. There's only one. Today is the 20th. Did you read the proverb for today? Why not? What's your excuse? Don't play that. But anyway, 
going to be skimming a little bit through Proverbs 20, giving some commentary, and then we got uh, actually got a few scriptures we're going to be going through today about this whole thing. Rome loses. Rome loses. Proverbs 20, just first one to start. Wine is a mocker. What is it to be anti-Christ? What is it? To replace and to be against. That's what it means to be anti-Christ. To replace it and also to be against it. Hmm. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Revelation 17. Verses 1 under verse 5. And <laughs> people who do not know the scriptures, ignorance and willful ignorance, which is stupidity. Um, someone who's working for the Vatican, such as uh, Eric Lionheart and countless others that I can't think of offhand, Stephen Anderson, um, who when they come to Revelation 17... They say that it's some like America. You, whoever you are, I don't care who you are. Mark my words. If anybody comes around, and they're not ignorant like a babe who just got saved yesterday, okay, reading the scriptures, okay, but uh, if someone's claiming to be a saint, a saved individual, and they say to you that America is Mystery Babylon, one of two options, okay? They're either ignorant, not knowing better, or they're willfully ignorant, don't want to know better, which is stupidity, and in that case, they're working for the Vatican. Like Eric Lionheart, working for the Vatican, taking away responsibility, deflecting away that Revelation 17 and 18 is talking about Roman Catholicism, Rome. It's not talking about the Jews. It's not talking about America. It's talking about Rome. Roman Catholicism. Okay? And someone who claims to be something that they ain't, well, they are Christians. They ain't saints. Okay? Uh, coming around telling you that Mystery Babylon is America or some other whatever, they have an agenda. They're defla uh, Henry Morris. Henry Morris, in his study Bible, um, in his note on Revelation 17, sorry, his notes, he deflected away from Rome. Okay, it's not Iraq, even though historic Babylon is Iraq. But, as we're going to see here, this has nothing to do with the country of Iraq, nothing to do with America, nothing to do with Israel. It's all Rome! And you guys lose. And there came uh, verses 1 on 5 and verse, uh, chapter 17, Revelation. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great Hua that sitteth upon many waters. Cross-reference verse 17. Uh, no, verse 15. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples, and multitudes and nations and tongues. See, uh, if you Catholics actually read the scriptures, um, you would learn that, and yeah, that was a dig at you, uh, you guys. You, you, I feel for you. I, there are some of you Catholics out there who are not the, like we're going to see, some of these obnoxious devils who are duped. I pity you people who are duped and actually think that Rome... That Rome is of the our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. I I I am dumbfounded. But then again, ignorance of Scripture is one of Satan's greatest weapons. And you guys, what you're told not to read the Scriptures too much because you wouldn't understand them. That's because you don't have the Spirit of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father Himself. You know the Holy Ghost. The Lord is that Spirit <laughs> on your Trinity. Okay, you don't have the Lord in you. The only time you have a God in you is when you eat it. Okay, but, so, if you read scripture, God, like, for example, 
many waters. Verse 15, it's a reference unto the people. You will read in the Old Testament oftentimes where mountains and trees are likened unto people and types thereof. Okay? Typology. you got to keep that in mind. Okay? Let's continue. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and I saw a woman, Mother Church, hmm, sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns. Blasphemy. Names of blasphemy. Some have argued what that means. It could mean many things. Um, personally, I liken it on names of blasphemy. Mormonism. Catholicism. Lutheranism. Okay? <laughs> okay. Um, Calvinism. All right? Free grace-ism. <laughs> <laughs> Ruckmanism <laughs> and so on and so on likened onto these crazy psychotic ites more on that in another video okay but uh, that's personally I mean the actual names of blasphemy um, what particularly I don't know I liken it like I said on uh, the names of blasphemy the Mormons <laughs> the Jehovah's Witnesses, the Catholics, the German Catholics, the Lutherans, the Calvinists, uh, the Anabaptists, and the Method, you know, names of blasphemy. Names of blasphemy. Anyway. <clears throat> and the woman was color was arrayed in purple and scarlet color. Well, the colors of Rome are golden light. That's a front. You look at the procession of the cardinals and bishops and all that stuff. What are the colors? What are the colors? Purple and scarlet. It's Rome's color. Colors are purple and scarlet. The white and gold um, distraction of the papal thing is just that, a distraction. You look at the procession of the cardinals and bishops. It's always purple and scarlet. This is talking about Roman Catholicism. Period. You're either ignorant, don't know that, there's nothing wrong with that, that can be fixed. Or you're willfully ignorant, you don't want to know, right? You're stupid. That's stupid. Okay, let's continue. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of the abominations and filthiness of her fornication. The chalice that the Catholics drink out of is a golden chalice. Sure, not real gold. Maybe it is. Who knows? They got their, their, uh, the Vatican is the wealthiest nation on earth. On planet earth. Absolutely. Y'all you you all like to deflect. Y'all like to deflect. Well, it's the house of sod, right? No. No. The Vatican. The House of Saud is not more wealthier than the Vatican. Because while the House of Saud might, or Saudi, or however you want to pronounce it, while they might have more tangible currency, the currency that Rome has are nations! Okay? The currency that uh, the Vatican Rome has is what? <laughs> is what? Peoples, multitudes, and nations, and tongues. The House of Saud doesn't have that. The Vatican does. Don't forget that. Don't you ever. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. Friend or foe. Roman Catholicism. Rome, the Vatican, the papal, everything is your enemy. Why? Because it's the church of Satan. It's not that silly one by that sodomite dude, whatever, uh, um, um, Leve, um, Antoine, Anton Leve. It's not that. No, no. The, the church of Satan is Roman Catholicism. And upon her forehead was a name written, 
Mystery Babylon the Great. It says Babylon. Okay, this this will be in the description box. Okay. Roman Catholicism is the perfected version of the Babylonian religion. Okay? Founded in Babylon. Founded in Babylon. Crafted in Egypt with all the many demigods, all these so-called saints of Rome, but it has been perfected in the Vatican. Roman Catholicism is the perfection of the Babylonian religion. Okay? If you were ever to read the two Babylons, but don't do that because he at least tells you the truth about a certain day in December. Okay? Anyway, but if you read the two Babylons by Alexander Hislop, which I do highly recommend, don't watch out for the one that you get from Smiley Dave. That one's bri uh, bridged. You want the unabridged version that has everything in it. Okay, there are several versions of it. Watch out for that one. Smiley Dave, uh, publications. Uh, he sells the the um, the two Babylons. Yes, he does. The version that you get from him doesn't have all the information in it. Keep that in mind. Okay. So where it says Mystery Babylon the Great. Okay, Babylon is right now today. It, it's it's in Iraq. Iraq, not Iraq, Iraq. And sorry for any of you um, uh, people out there who are saints who are of uh, Iraq. Beg your pardon. Beg your pardon for that. But uh, modern Iraq is scriptural Babylon. Okay? Yes, yes. And you don't see the world going to Babylon, Iraq, to bend their knees to whoever's in control over there. Okay? No. Mystery Babylon the Great. The great religion that came from Babylon. Crafted in Egypt, perfected in Rome. Okay? The mother! Mother Church! The mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. Every foul, rank, and vile, disgusting heresy that comes out has its roots somewhere in the Vatican. Somewhere in the Vatican. Somewhere. Okay? Back to Proverbs 20, uh, verses 9 on to verse 19. Who can say, I have made my heart clean, I am pure from my sins? Note the I have made my heart clean. I am pure from my sins. Well, you go to a Catholic. Hmm? You do your penance. You, you have the Catholic contrition, which is different than scriptural contrition. Okay. They, you know, they go to their Jesuit priest and they get the, you know, a hundred Hail Marys and then go away, drop some money in the collection plate and you're good, right? Divers weights and divers measures, both of them are are alike abomination to the Lord. Divers, the scale, this is a reference onto a scale in the marketplaces. They would put weights on the scale to get so they could barter and have price, okay? It was a scale that's being mentioned. That's what that's about, okay? Now think about this. Think about this. Divers weights and divers measures. What does divers mean? Well, here we can tell you, especially in context of this verse, both of them are like abomination to the Lord. Divers, as far as being used in that context, we know it's not good because it's an abomination of the Lord. What are you Catholics? What are you heretics weighing these things upon? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Or like Paul, I judge not even my own self. Because I know that's in, that in me, there's nothing good. But he who judges me, 
he who judges me is the Lord. Okay? So, uh, I saw that this morning. It's like, divers weights and divers measures. Weights and measures. So it can get a price. Hmm. hmm. What, 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 what are these people weighing these things upon? Their, their, their beliefs, their faith. It's like, like fake racers. Their faith is in their faith. Not anchored upon the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? Catholics, faith are in the commandments, the precepts of the Roman Catholic Church. Because a Catholic doesn't know if they're going to heaven when they die. A Calvinist, what's his thing? He's elect. He's elect. He's got the faith of Jesus himself. Having the faith for him. Wow. Wow. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Getting too special, huh? What are these people weighing these things in? And we see divers' weights and divers' measures. Both of them are like abomination to the Lord. Okay? Let's continue. Even a child is known by his doings, whether his work be pure and whether it be right. When I try to quote this verse, I always I mess up and say good. There is only one good, and that is God. We're going to look at that today as well. Okay? But whether it be right. Hold on. I can't pause this because I got OBS up. So. Hey, Catholic. Hey, you, Catholic. Huh? You dive his weights. What do you, what do you measure? What do you weigh these things upon? The authorized version of scriptures? That's a rhetorical question, though, because you're told to specific. This is like at the top of the forbidden books by the Roman Catholic Church. Do you even weigh yourselves in your own catechisms, huh? Do you even weigh yourselves in that stuff, huh? Huh, 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 Catholic? Huh? No, you don't. What do you guys weigh these things on? Hmm? Hmm? How do you know what is right? Well, you're your own God, and yes, yes, man to a degree can have some kind of semblance of what is right, uh, but ultimately man in and of, his, of in, in and of himself cannot judge appropriately, accurately, righteously, according to his own self. Unless you're a Catholic, right? No, and that's what Paul was talking about in, uh, what is that, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. That's what he's talking about, okay? All right? How do you know? See, we saints, we have a perfect standard, the authorized version of the scriptures. What do you got? You got a whore! That's right. Let's continue. The hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord hath made even both of them. Faith cometh by hearing. We walk by faith, not by sight. The eye is included in there, yes, but I found that interesting. Love, not sleep. Well, what's wrong with sleep? It, it, the spirit of sleep. The spirit of slumber. We're going to look at that today, too. Okay? You Catholics, you heretics out there, you, you people who want to belong to a clique of people, um... You're asleep. You're wide awake, but yet you're asleep. Sleep. Sleep. Obey. Consume. Conform. Mm, sound familiar? Mm, familiar. Love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. Open thine eyes. And thou shalt be satisfied with bread. Do you have eyes to see and ears to hear? Well, well I'm blind. Well, you can still have eyes to see even though you can't see with your physical eyes there, pal. Hmm. And bread. 
You know, like these two guys are like peanut butter and jelly sandwiched between the bread of life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you little punk. You didn't know that you were going to have a part in uh, coming up with a catchphrase, huh? <laughs> these guys are like peanut butter and jelly. Amen, you little punk. Yeah, sandwiched between the bread of life. Thank you very little. Let's continue. It is not. It is not, saith the buyer. Ye hath God said. But when he has gone his way, then he boasteth. What is he boasting? What is he boasting? Have you considered that? Well, we see here. We see here, okay. Love not sleep. Linking up with poverty and being fed. But that you got someone here who says, I am clean by my own self, because uh, reference in verse 9, says, it is not, it is not. They have God said, saith the buyer. But when he is gone his way, then he boasteth. And what is he, what is he buying? What is he buying? He's buying a strain in a net and swallowing the camel. Because look at the context so far. Look at the context so far. Okay? You're either a child of God or a child of the devil. Okay? Verse 11. Alright? Verse 11. Verse uh, 10. What are you weighing these things upon? What are you weighing your faith, your beliefs, your hope, your trust upon? Okay? Alright? And number uh, verse 12. Okay, the hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord hath made both, even both of them. Okay, he's given you, if you're blessed to see, you can see, blessed to hear, you can hear. But there is also the sense of having eyes to see spiritually and ears to hear spiritually. Okay. There is gold and a multitude of rubies. Gold and multitude of rubies. And we just read in Revelation 17 about how the hua decked with gold and precious stones, just like Satan had all them precious stones on him in Ezekiel chapter 28, verses uh, 10 on to verse 19. Hmm. Go figure. But the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. Knowledge is the, uh, don't have a better word at the moment, side effect, if you will. Don't have a better word at the moment. Um, is the aftermath, is the effect of wisdom. And on the man, he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Wisdom is the fear of the Lord. There are two wisdoms. i got to write these down, or else I forget. There are two wisdoms, Catholic. There are two. The church and God you serve is for earthly, based upon flesh, sensual, led by your senses, you believe and receive, devilish. Okay? Devilish. Devilish. There are two wisdoms. One of God, the one that is of the earth, earthly, which is of Satan. You're Catholic. You're in the church of Satan. Okay? And your mother church, your mother church, is a whore. I don't say that. I don't say that. The scriptures say that. Take it up with the Father. Unfortunately, you will at the great white throne of judgment unless you get out of that system. But the lips of knowledge are a precious jewel. And see, what does Satan do? Flashes you. <laughs> I do this all the time. You know, if, if, uh, if I'm here doing visual stimuli, here, I'm going to do the visual stimuli. How does he flash the world before your face in a moment of time? Your tablet, your hell phone, whatever. And what does he promise you? He'd give you all of this. If you fall down and worship him, all will be yours. 
You don't need all these riches and wealth, do you, when you've got a hell phone and you can uh, live vicariously through other people. And they, well, my life stinks. Look at these. The tactic and trick of Satan. Take his garment that is surety for a stranger and take a pledge of him for a, there's that reference again, strange woman. Strange woman. Mystery Babylon the Great, mother of harlots. You can argue, well, that I don't know if that's contextually right. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll go with you. Maybe not. But it sure does fit, doesn't it? Sure does fit. Bread of deceit is sweet to a man. But afterwards, his mouth shall be filled with gravel. Look at verse 1. Wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Verse 17. Bread of deceit is sweet to a man. But afterwards, his mouth shall be filled with gravel. What is that a reference on to? Think about that. The Catholic wafer cookie. The wine. The mass. Is that directly making reference onto that? No. But it sure does fit, don't it? Doesn't it? I mean, well, well, well worth verse one. Come on, yeah, it does fit. I mean, come on. You know, made drunk with the with the wine of her fornication. Wine is a mocker. Every purpose is established by counsel. Divers weights and, uh, and divers weights and divers measures, both of them are alike abomination to the Lord. Verse twelve: the hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord hath made even both of them. Uh, verse fifteen: there is gold and multitude of rubies, but the lips of knowledge are a precious. Every, um, every purpose is established by good counsel. Where are you getting your counsel from? Where are you weighing these things on? See, Roman Catholicism and every false abomination out there from Calvinism to, to whatever ism or whatever it you are, okay, what is, the, what, is the, what is the scale that you have your weights and measures on? Huh? Is it here, the scriptures? Here, you Catholics don't even follow that. Not even Francis. <coughs> Not even Francis goes by this. But that's that's all part of the scheme. That's all part of the scheme. Wait, that check out the Catholicism playlist. We talk about that, huh? What do you? What is the council that you people are going to? What counsel is in you? What wisdom is in you? And with good advice, make war. Good advice. There is none good. That includes you. That includes me. There is none good but who? Right. The Roman Catholic Church, the Lord rebuke you. You dare equate goodness with the Roman Catholic Church and there is none good but God, even to you polite and cordial Catholics, the Lord rebuke you. That, that's, that, that don't do that. Okay? You know, confession, which does stem from Babylon, the Jesuit order, Use the confession to get secrets, obviously, because you Catholics who go to confession, you had you gotta tell that pervert behind the mesh or whatever everything you've done. Whether and I mean, and that um, uh, that book uh, by Chick, uh, the, the the confessional one, the um, the uh, the where is it? Wait, give, give me a minute. Sorry for you. Uh, getting a, a different view. There, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. The priest, the woman, and the confessional. 
The Jesuit order uses the confessional, uh, used the confessional and still does to get dirt on people. That's one of the tactics of these infiltrators as well. The, uh, some of them will try to worm their way in to get information. Um, and uh, that's why, you know, there are certain devils out there who you should never speak to because they record everything. That's Jesuit. That's Jesuit. To gain information on people so they could be used against them. That's what Jesuits do. Hmm. He that goeth about as a talebearer revealeth secrets. Talebearer! Do for uh, do forty Hail Marys full of grapes. Blessed be the fruit of the loom. Okay, but give you give your money in the coffers out there. <laughs> Therefore, meddle not with him that flattereth with his lips. Now, unfortunately, no, no, no. I've irritated some priests before. <laughs> Not that hard to do. Um, the scripture. But usually the Catholics, usually, not always, oh, definitely not always, usually for the facade, for the veneer of civility, most of the Catholic priests that you're going to run into will have this aura, this facade of uh, civility. Most of the time. Most of the time. At verse 23, again, comparing with uh, verse 10, divers' weights are an abomination unto the Lord. The thing that you're weighing itself, the weights themselves, okay? Divers' weights are an abomination unto the Lord. And a false balance false balance is not good. A little don't hurt. You're, you're being too extreme. Hmm? Verse 24. Man's goings are of the Lord. Now, there are those out there who claim to be saints and they ain't. But if you are the saint, if you are a saint, a saved individual, uh, the Lord is guiding your path, but not by gunpoint, you idiot. Okay, sorry for the idiot part, but there are some people who want you to believe that you, you're a robot, that you're forced to do things by God. God does not do that. He does not operate like that at all. Okay, the, uh, some uh, some individual come around giving you a Jesus that is coercive. That's not the Jesus of Scripture. Okay? Run away from someone like that. All right? But man's goings are of the Lord. You're an atheist, whoever, whoever you are. The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, made you. You're here because He has allowed it. He has given you life. He has put light behind your eyes. You have life today because of of him. You wanting to accept that or not is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. That's the fact. Your nonsensical evolution is is laughable. It's stupid. Okay? It's stupid. It really is. Okay? And, and look at that at verse 9. Who can say, I have made my heart clean. I am pure for my sins. Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? Well, <laughs> ye shall be his gods, knowing good and evil. Be pragmatic, right? Hey, if it works, it must be good. See, pragmatism. A brother had uh, asked for a video on that, and one came, and I can't remember for the life of me uh, where, um, I think I might know, thank you, about pragmatism, okay? Pragmatism, if it works, it must be good. Charles Lawson is a pragmatist. Even, I believe, uh, he even admits it, okay? Feels good, do it, right? 
right? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil, right? Right? That that and see, that's the thing. That's the thing with you Catholics. That's the thing with you people who want to be in a high school clique. <laughs> okay? Alright? What's your what's your measure? What's your measure? Uh, Isaiah 14, verses 13 and 14. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. And this is who? Lucifer! Catholic. You're told that it's the morning star. You're told, Catholic, that Isaiah 14, verses 10 on to 15, okay, is talking about who? <laughs> <laughs> it's talking about who? Well, the morning star is Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ has fallen from heaven? No, this be Satan, Lucifer. Okay? No wonder you guys are so messed up. With that hanging in the air, let's read a little bit more out of Proverbs, huh? You, you know, if you were to spend your life just in the Proverbs alone. Now, granted that you, you need more, but just if you, like, woke up once a day, you'd read, read the Scriptures, people. Read the Scriptures, okay? Read the Scriptures, okay? For God's sake, read the Scriptures. That's the problem. A lot of you people aren't. You Even you King James Bible in your head, you're not even reading the Scriptures yourselves. You're not. You're not. And Satan, our enemy, is banking on that. And he's got you! He's got you. But if you were to immerse yourself into, in the Proverbs, it would not be a waste of life. Proverbs 14, verses 12 on to verse 16. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man... But the end thereof are the ways of death. Catholicism. Seems good. Right? Right? You get, you get the visual stimuli. You get the theater. You get the pageantry. You get the effect. You get the structure. You're getting sand. You're getting fire and ashes. <laughs> you are. <laughs> and you're told that you got to stay away from meat. If you want to do that, that's go ahead. But making it a commandment, like Catholicism does, that you're in sin if you do go get no, whoa, 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 whoa. That's totally contrary to Romans 14. Okay, and it's holy days or holy days, not holidays, right? Holy days, not holidays. I kind of messed that up. Holy days. The holy days of Scripture. Not holidays. Okay? Not holidays. And in Scripture, the holy days that are referenced to are the ones in Scripture. Okay? Not man-made ones. I, I ran into that argument once before. Well, Purim was made by the Jews. Where do you learn about Purim? In scripture, okay, nice try. Subtle, but nice try. Okay. It's holy day, not holiday. And I and, and I, thank, I praise the Lord like whenever I talk to Brother Alexander um, and I mess up like that. He's he's quick <laughs> it's like it's holy day, not holiday. It's like thank you. He's quick. Get get that right. Praise the Lord, okay? <laughs> okay. A blessing and a curse, right, dear brother? All right. Proverbs fourteen. Verses 12 on verse 16. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death, and the wages of sin is death. Catholicism looks good. Calvinism sounds good. So does easy believism. They sound good, don't they? They're not scriptural. They're heresy. In the end... 
but the end thereof are the ways of death. Even in laughter the heart is sorrowful, and the end of that mirth is heaviness. You're laughing now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The backslider in heart shall be filled with, with his own ways, and the fear of the wicked shall come upon them. And a good man shall be satisfied from himself. Good man? Scripture says there is none good. Yes, that's true. This is not a contradiction. A good man, what is a good man? Someone who is after the Lord, who seeks the Lord, who is saved as the Lord within them. It's not the man himself, but that spirit, the Lord Jesus, that is in you, that makes this vessel of earth anything. Okay? That's what you Catholics don't have. If you were actually a saint, saved Catholic, the Lord would not allow you. You not at first. He would he would show you so many things. He would convict you. He's not going to force you out, but he will show you. Look, Catholicism is the Church of Satan. Rome is the Church of Satan. Okay? He would show you. And if you were a saint, there's no way. I, 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 refuse, I can't believe it. I refuse to believe it. How can a saint remain in Catholicism? Ruckman, is, he said this. that He said that there are saved Catholics. There is no such thing as a saved Catholic. A Catholic can be saved. Amen. But there is no such thing as a saved, saved Catholic. Doesn't happen, pal. Sorry. I, I am. I, I'm genuine. I'm sorry. Because so many of you are duped by that whore. And some of you have a zeal. Whoa. Boy. It's like I say uh, quite a bit often. It's like if some of these enemies of ours actually were our brethren, saints. Wow. Wow. If. If, if the, the, the one guy from Canada were my brother, I, I would not mind being on his live stream if he, were, if he were a saved man. I would not mind. At least he's engaging. <laughs> At least. Okay. See, the guy's the devil guiding people to hell. But at least he's engaging. I mean, if he were, if he were my brother, if that were a saved man, and if you see this, you know who I'm talking about. Um, I, I would, I wouldn't hesitate to, you know, to be on his little whatever he does. I wouldn't hesitate if he were my brother. He's not my brother, you know. I, I, you know, and I think about that stuff sometimes. It's like if some of these guys who are the enemies of our Lord were actually saints. Wow, wow, okay, wow. Some of these enemies who have these impressive things that they're able to do. Wow, if they were a saint, and the Lord's like, okay, now you're going to do that for me. But you're going to change it up because you're not going to do it in deceit or try to destroy people. No, 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 no. What a, what a, wow. If some of these our enemies were to become saints, wow. Wow. The simple believeth every word. But the prudent man looketh well to his going. And prudence is co-mingled with wisdom. Check it out yourself. A wise man, tie in wisdom, wise man, see? A wise man feareth, feareth the Lord, and departeth from evil, which is understanding. Ooh, look at that verse. Ver, uh, Proverbs 14, verse 16. Look at that verse. A wise man feareth, and unto man, God said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. You know what? That's, uh, that's Job 28, 28. Okay, go there. And uh, keep your digits at the proverb there. Okay? And Catholic, please, if you got a scripture, please check this out. Please check this out. Okay? Please check this out. There are two wisdoms. You Catholics are in the wisdom of this world. Wisdom that cometh from Satan. Okay? Alright. Let's do a little comparison here. Alright? 
Verse 16 in Proverbs 14. A wise man feareth. Job 28, 28. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord. That is wisdom. Proverbs 14, 16. A wise man feareth and departeth from evil. Job 28, 28. And to depart from evil is understanding. But the fool rageth and is confident. Rageth. How dare you speak against Mother Church? How dare I? Oh, I dare. I dare. I dare. Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16. Verses 1 under verse 11. See, you people are being duped. You think that because it has all this, this history, and it does, and all this visual stuff, and all these, these, this, whatever, you're being deceived. It looks good. It sounds good. But it isn't good because there's only one that is good, and that is God. The church of Satan, dear people, Roman Catholicism is not of God. Calvinism is not of God. Lutheranism is not of God. Lutheran believed in baptizing babies. He also believed in the... Uh, I, I might have that one wrong, so if someone rebukes me on that, I, I admit if I was wrong about that, if he believed in baptizing babies. I don't think I am, but if I am, if I'm wrong about that, forgive me. Okay, I, here, I said it there. But uh, Luther... Uh, number one, didn't rightly divide the word of truth. And also, number two, um, he did believe in water baptism as a necessity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I personally do not believe that Martin Luther was a saved man. Even though the Lord used him. The Lord did. The Lord used him and he, you know, the Heilige, the Schwichter or whatever, the German, the German language was one of the seven purifications for the authorized version to come about. Yes. Remember also, though, the Lord uh, spake through an ass, female donkey, and also Joab. Joab. That, that, that one kind of scary. Let's continue. The preparations of the heart and man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes. But the Lord weigheth the lowercase s spirits. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. What's the flip side to that? There's a flip side to that, you know. Think about it. If you're not committing your works unto the Lord, hmm? If you're not doing as the Lord would have you to do, not for salvation today in this dispensation, I'm not talking about that, okay, not talking about that, but um, if you're doing what the Lord will have you to do, okay, and thy thoughts shall be established, because you're, you're, you know, you're doing what the Lord will have you to do, you're outtracting, you're talking to people, you're abstaining from all appearance of evil, okay, all right? Not to be saved. Don't, don't get confused with that. But what's the flip side to that? You're indulging in the skin suit. You're indulging on a tripe online, the swipe up, swipe up, or swipe sideways, right? Your thoughts will be established. Which Jesus are you serving? I got to write that down. I'll forget that. Which Jesus are you serving? Which one? Okay, let's continue. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even, even the wicked for the day of evil, as pertaining to judgment. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not go unpunished. Uh, proud in heart. Catholics are very proud. I have been confirmed. I have been confession. I have been baptized. I have had the cookie. I, 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 the five wills of Isaiah 14 after their father the devil. And their whore mother 
Roman Catholicism. I will not be kind when speaking about that whore, Roman Catholicism. If that offends you, oh well. What your church has done to my father and his body. So anyway, let's continue. Everyone that is proud and hardened is abomination is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand joined in hand, he shall not be unpunished. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of men, uh, people depart from evil. Were you paying attention? Of course you were. Some of you who were actually reading. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Not the fear of public opinion. Public opinion. Don't get me started. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace at him. Peace with him, excuse me. Uh, also another way, uh, another thing for self-reflection that we can do as saints is, okay, uh, if you're being attacked, if something, uh, why are you off kilter with God? Are you wrong on something? Okay? All right? These are things with self-examination in the scriptures you need to ponder. Hmm? There are many things, many ways that things can come about to you as a saint. Like I said at the beginning of this video, it uh, and we have a track record to prove this. Whenever the Lord uses a vessel of earth, such as myself, myself and my wife, other brothers or sisters, um, usually the Lord allots for a kick to keep us where we need to be. Or it could be because you might be off on something. Okay? The scriptures are right about whose faith it is, you idiot. You're teaching Calvinism. Period. That was for someone else. Okay? Let's continue. Let's continue. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. And that reminds me right right away of Ecclesiastes, right? Ecclesiastes 11. Ecclesiastes 11, 9 and 10. Let's read that verse again. A man's heart deviseth, deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. Ecclesiastes 11, 9 and 10. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart Heart, cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the way, uh, ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes, thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. And that judgment thing again, you, you people don't like. Therefore, remove sorrow from thy heart, and put away evil from thy flesh, for childhood and youth are vanity. Back to Proverbs 16. A divine sentence is in the lips of a king. Scriptures. Okay. His mouth transgresseth not in judgment. If the Lord were to suddenly, it's like, okay, I gave you a nice planet. You, you done all this crazy stuff to it. I'm done with you. You're all, boom, you're gone. I'm sick of it. He would be right and just to do so. His, right, his judgment is righteous. And we can get the flavor of his righteous judgment through the authorized version of the scriptures. Not this. And here we, here's the thing about the weighing thing. A just weight and balance are the Lord's. All the weights in the bag, his work. Just weight and balance in comparison to what we saw in Proverbs 20. A false one. So we have here, in the authorized version of the scriptures, a just balance. What does that verse say? A just weight and balance. We have a just weight and balance in the authorized version of the scriptures. We have an abomination 
a false weight and a false ba balance in Rome, in the NIV, in the ESV, in John MacArthur's LSD, okay, in Calvinism, in Lutheranism, okay, in Mormonism, in Jehovah's Witnesses-ism, okay, even in Ruckman-ism, okay, all right, whatever ism you can come up with, okay, we saints, we have, we have a just weight and balance in the scriptures, okay, okay, why do you think uh, they don't want you to read it there, Catholic, we've talked about that before, Proverbs 21, verses 1 and verse 6. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. Uh, if he doesn't want you to be alive, you ain't going to be alive. But see, a lot of you people are alive, and you have a chance to get right with the Lord and come to him broken, contrite, and in fear of him, call upon his name. The way of the cross. The elected way of the cross. But so many are thieves and robbers and want to boot the door and climb up some other way. Okay? King's heart, and we're reading uh, Proverbs 21 on to verse 6. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. Now, one might say, well, that's coercion. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Turn it whithersoever he will. It's like, I want you to pay attention to that. Do that. Do. He's not forcing you. You have, this is your part, okay? And this is what Calvinists can't stand. You have to make the right decisions. Because if the Lord decides for you, okay? If he decides for you, that means that you are a robot. You're a machine. Okay? And God, we've proven that over time and many videos God doesn't want robots okay doesn't <clears throat> every way of a man is right in his own eyes but the Lord pondereth the hearts to do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice and justice and judgment where do you get just justice and judgment the scriptures okay the scriptures. Okay? <laughs> and it's more acceptable than sacrifice. All the sacrifices that are given to Rome. Literally with the cookie and the wine, but all the all the money, I mean, the money that's funneled into Rome. Oy, oy, oy. And high look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked sin. Plowing the field to plant seeds of destruction. But in high look. You know, I, I really got to mention this. Some of the most pompous individuals that I've met, some of the most, have been, it's a, it's a toss-up. But if I had to choose between the two, probably I would have to say the charismatics. I really would. To, to be the most pompous. Um, you know, well, I have to give some tongues. And you don't. Not everybody has that. That's a special gift for special people. Right next to them is the Catholics and, uh, you know, Pentecostals, Pentecostal Charismatics, thank you, Pentecostals, Charismatics with uh, Catholicism, the Catholics. I've been confirmed. I am part of the church that Christ founded. <laughs> Not the Christ of the Scriptures. Uh -uh. Uh. Calvinists. Calvinists. <laughs> Like, like the guy from Dudley Do-Right and that cross-dressing idiot. They're Calvinists. So they're special. They're elect. Hmm. The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness. But everyone that is of a hasty spirit, of a, but everyone that is hasty, excuse me, only to want. The getting of treasures, Rome, by a lying tongue is a vanity tossed to and fro of them that seek death. And all those that hate the Lord love death. Proverbs 8. All they that hate me love death. The wages of sin is death. Hmm. 
and lying. Got to give money to the Roman Catholic Church. The whole thing with what Spark Luther was uh, uh, giving money to the Roman Catholic Church to get people out of purgatory. Proverbs 24, just one verse. Proverbs 24. One verse. One verse. Verse 12. If thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not. Behold, doth not he that pondereth the heart consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul, doth not he know it? And shall he not render to every man according to his works? And see, the thing is, well, it's like, wait a minute, Brad, what, what, what does that have to do with what we just read in verse 6 and 21? The getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a vanity tossed to and fro of them that seek death. You, you people think that Rome is going to get away with everything that she is doing? Do you think you're going to get away with everything you are doing? See, that's one of the things about atheists, and this, again, is one of the reasons why lost people hate judgment. You're not getting away from the eyes of the Lord. There isn't a place that you can go where the Lord will not see you. You're not going to escape the Lord, and you're not going to escape His judgment. Psalm 139. Psalm 139, verses 7 on to verse 12. Psalm 139, verses 7 on to verse 12. Whither shall I go from thy lowercase as spirit? Hmm. Interesting. Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there, obviously. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. Now remember, there in hell, uh, in the tale about Abraham's bosom, there was like a causeway or something that prevented them from going to and fro. But the Lord still sees. In the book of Revelation, they will be tormented with fire in the presence of the angels and the, of the Lamb. The smoke of their torment goeth up forever and ever, ever and ever. Okay? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the utmost parts of the sea, like that crazy North Sea stuff. You ever see that? Videos on the North Sea? 10000 a month? You can get me on that, uh, doing any of that kind of stuff, man. No way. Even there, shall, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Ain't going to get away from God. He, he sees everything. He's everywhere. He's omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent. Okay? Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee. But the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. Meaning that you're not going to find cover in either or. Cover and light. Yeah. By putting off this thing that you're this righteous person. But you're a, you're a whited sepulcher. On the outside you look good. On and in the inside you stink. Okay. Now. Matthew 15. There are stronger places that we can go to in Scripture, but I'm addressing people who do not rightly divide the word of truth and think that the entirety of Scripture is written to them. It's written for us. It's not all written to you. You need to understand that. But Catholics don't. Matthew chapter 15, verses 7 on to verse 9, and here it is. Ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah, Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth. Oh, how many Christians do that. And honoreth me with their lips. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 
Yeah. They never say with their mouth that there is no God. But in their heart they do all the time. The fool says in his heart there is no God. That doesn't say anywhere that the fool with his mouth won't say that there is no God. Look, look at the devils. They're, they're constantly, oh, I believe in Jesus. Oh, I'm sure you do. Which one? Okay. They'd never with their mouth say that there was no God. It's in their hearts. Okay. Our Lord's addressing this. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Yeah, because it's, they're their own God. The heart's far from them because they are the God of their own heart. Okay? Again, there is no such thing as an atheist. No such thing. You ever meet an atheist? Get it? Get right at it, boy! Make sure you have a sword on you, scriptures. Okay? Get right at it! Get on that! You're an atheist, huh? Oh, you say, you lie. You lie and your breast stink. You want a tic tac? They get all up. It's like, how, who tells you what's right and wrong? Oh, I do. Well, you are your own God. You are your own God. Okay? Atheist, you are your own God. You in the comment, you grow up. Because you're going to hell. But, let me hold up the catechism. But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines. The commandments of men. Isaiah 29. Isaiah 29. That video about the um, wooden rods has um, gone in directions that I was not expecting, brother. Um, looking into the scripture... When does life begin? You know, the, the thing about abortionists, you know, like uh, life begins at conception and stuff like that. It's branched off into that. That video, Lord willing, will be coming, but it's not going to be like what you or I think it will be. Anyway, Isaiah 29. I just wanted to throw that out for a dear brother. Okay? You'll find out this isn't as easy as <laughs> looks. Proverbs 20, uh, Isaiah 29, verses 9 and verse 16. Stay yourselves and wonder. Cry ye, cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with drink. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and hath closed the, your eyes and the that. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. Sleep. There's that reference to sleep again. And hath closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, have he, hath he covered. Now, again, you would like to argue for coercion. But this is not coercion. Okay? Once you make a decision to be against the Lord, once you go down that path, it'll be like, go ahead. Go ahead. You don't want to hear it? Fine. You won't hear it. Fine. Made your choice. Everybody, when it comes to this thing about a God who coerces, they always like to point at Pharaoh. Pharaoh. You know, well, harden his heart. Pharaoh already believed in his heart that he was a God. Big G. Yeah, so the Lord's like, okay, pal, you think you're me, huh? Okay, I'm going to lead you on. Okay, that's what this is talking about. This is also uh, referenced in uh, doctrine for us today in this dispensation in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, okay? Where, hey, these people, they don't want truth. They want to believe a lie. Fine. God will oblige you. That's what this is a reference onto, okay? And the vision of all is become unto you as, a word, as the words of a book that is sealed. Don't read the scriptures too much because uh, you won't understand it. Yeah, yeah, you got to go to the whore to understand it. And she, she guides you off in all nonsensical craziness, okay? Which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. 
but we don't really know everything what God is saying to us. And we don't. But these scholars who go to these Jesuit-run and funded cemetery schools, seminary schools, brother, you asked about what is a cemeterian? Someone who goes to a seminary and gets poisoned by the Jesuits. That's what that is, okay? But it's like, well, there is no perfect standard. Authorized version. They say, you know, King James. Nothing wrong with calling it the King James. Nothing wrong with that. But they say the King James, that's, yeah, that's the best one, but it's not perfect. Oh, boy, here we go. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I am not learned. Look at those two verses. Read this, I pray thee. And he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. You got to read the Hebrew and the Greek in order to know what God may be possibly said. But then the Hebrew and the Greek, which ones? Which ones? There are a plethora of them. Interesting, there's a multitude of Jesuses out there. Yes, there's only one Jesus. Yes, there are. But there are many false Jesuses out there. And when someone goes to the Hebrew and the Greek argument, um, which one? Which one? Which edition of the Texas Receptus? Which edition of the Nestle of Lawn, huh? One by Metzger, huh? Hmm? Which one? Hmm. It is sealed. Well, the closest we got are these certain, you know, these manuscripts, but we still don't know. A scholar that comes from a Jes Jesuit uh, cemetery school is trained to believe, number one, in men. Yea, hath God said. Textual criticism. I have yet to personally meet, personally meet, a Jesuit educated scholar, one of these building guys, you know, who will say to you that there is a perfect Bible out there. They got ones that got get close, but there is no, no perfect standard to these people. Then what's their standard? What are they weighing these things in people? Yea, hath God said. Okay. Verse 13. And we are reading on to verse 16. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. You want to believe in a lie? God will oblige you. So hey, there you go. There you go. Gobble up all the wisdom of men that you can. Okay? Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. And we already addressed that in Psalm 139. Okay? Woe unto them that seek Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are in the dark. And they say, Who seeth us? And who knoweth us? Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Esteemed as the potter's clay. Clay, vessels of earth, easily broken. For... For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not. And that's exactly what you atheists do. That you came from millions and billions of years. And you don't have any evidence of your God. I got all the evidence you need, buddy. It's right here. Let me, can I give it to you? But no, you don't want it. Okay? Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not. Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it? He hath no understanding. That, that, brother, a hey, brother, get, get your little pen. And I know that you mark your scriptures up, color-coded. Mark that one. <laughs> mark that one. Remember that one. Especially with dealing with an atheist. It's like, dude, this is you. <laughs> this is you. <laughs> you don't got any evidence of your God. I, I sure do. You just don't want it. But see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. And here we're going to break 
here's where we're going to that I actually have. Here's where we're going to now. I have not per I have not personally uh, responded to these comments yet, but I will. I will. Uh, I'm going to put uh, some guys need some videos, but um, I, I want to address this. I want to address this. Looking at the comments on this uh, cursed ashes video. Okay. Now um, let me see. Let me get. Uh, I want to make sure that everyone is up there. That you do the trees. What does your comment have to do with the price of tea in China? I thought we were saved by faith. Catholics have faith. Yes, Catholic ha Catholics have faith in their system, in their Pope, in man, not in the Lord Jesus Christ. So what's your problem? Are you saying we can lose our salvation? Today, no, you can't. It's not your salvation to lose. Uh, Catholics, are their faith is in what? Their system and the Pope in the things of man. Their faith is in Satan, not of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, dude, uh, the trees, I was going to be snarky to you, but I'm just going to remove your comment. But that, that, you're stupid. There, dude, you're stupid. Get your head out from betwixt Rome's buttocks. Okay, pal? All right? Anyway. And uh, this one right here, this ordo whatever says sacrilege, I am going to put a, in the comment, I'm going to, amen, amen, praise the Lord, sacrilege to the Roman Catholic Church, amen, amen, buddy, amen, uh, this, that one, um, I not, don't care about that, obnoxious, wait till I get going, uh, there is no God, nice, abbreviating profanity, grow up, Valdrax, why don't you grow up? Atheist, you're not an atheist, Mr. Valdrax or Valdrez or whatever you are. You are not an atheist. You are your own God. You believe in a God. You believe in yourself. Okay? All right, well, we just read, uh, okay, in Isaiah 29, verse 16. The Lord rebuke you. You go shut up. Okay? I'm going to leave you a video for you to consider. All right? But I'll get to that later. Okay. And and here's the individual with the solid snake or big boss uh, avatar. Here's the one that actually sparked this video. Bravo, Mr. Kind Steel Five with the lick a uh, solid snake thing or a big boss. And I. <laughs> <laughs> you you Catholics you Catholics you got you guys are something else and I say to thee thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it extra whatever that's Latin one holy Catholic and apostolic church you will submit the hell I will that's hey, Mr. Uh, kind Steel. That's why I think your. That's why I think of your church. And Mr. Kind Steel Five, I'm going to show you. We are going to look at the fact that Rome loses. Rome loses. Your church, which is the Church of Satan, son loses all right now there are other ones on here that I will deal with personally and whatnot um, you know I uh, like this one Ash Wednesday is kind of odd though Lent is glory to God I love my Catholic friends and my Protestant friends I am Eastern Orthodox not gonna okay you come you leave it leave your comments that's fine I I don't care uh, there are certain things that will trigger me and we'll make and I will block you okay but stuff like that whatever dude whatever whatever good for you good for you but like like this this the trees guy I'll, I will uh, send him a link for a video and I will remove that comment and block it. I ain't got time for that stupidity okay I ain't got time for that stupidity but I wanted to show you guys because uh, I might forget to do this but there are like um, 
the one atheist guy who's like, there is no God, grow up for F.S. sakes, okay, veiled conf uh, profanity, the video, you need his forgiveness, I'm going to leave him a link. But I might forget, because I, I do that sometimes. But I, I wanted to show you guys this about, and this, now whether this kind steel five guy is sincere or just saying it for shock value, um, the hell I will submit to Rome. Ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen. You obviously already have. You poor creature, you. I, I, I hate when that happens. You poor creature, you. Okay? But while we're talking on that, you know, about uh, Rome, you know, you will submit. You gotta remember, dear people, Rome loses. But you see that comment section there? You gotta remember what it's what is written in Luke. <laughs> in Luke 22. Luke 22, one verse, fifth, verse 53. When I was daily with you in the temple, ye stretched forth no hands against me. But this is your hour. And the power of darkness. This is your time now. Your time now, you devils. Your time is now. That's why I say to the people who, um, who would, you know, like the devils. I, I, I really do. I really do hope all my enemies, and I got a lot of them. <laughs> I do. I, I do got a lot of enemies. I hope you, every one of you, I hope you're living your best life now. I hope your little silly publication is going great. I, do, I, hope you, I hope you guys are living in the lap of luxury. I hope you don't ever have to worry about the things that us common poor folk have to worry about. I hope you have, none of, I hope you have the best of health because this is your best life. This is all you got. This is all you guys have. What awaits us, the Church of God, the saints? But this is your best life now. And I seriously do hope that you're enjoying it. I really do. I really do. Ephesians chapter 6. We also have to remember, brethren, I have to remember, okay? Uh, I've encountered quite a few obnoxious people and quite odious people in my time. And there are many that would say that of me. Good for them. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Okay. But Ephesians 6.12. Ephesians 6.12. This is their time, brethren. When you see one of these Christians just getting by and getting bigger and bigger and bigger in the public thing, Gotta be, gotta question that. It's like, are you being raised up so the Lord can make you fall? Hmm? Or are you even a brother? But in Ephesians 6 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, okay? But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, like Arturo Sosa, the most dangerous, powerful man on earth. Okay? Spiritual wickedness in high places. Okay? Look at, look at the American government. I rest my case. Look at your government. I rest my case. Okay? Spiritual. Okay? Spiritual wickedness. Okay? Google is run by Jesuits. Okay? You too run by Jesuits. Okay? All right. Uh, every, virtually, I, I, I think pretty much, virtually every social media platform has its tie-ins with the Jesuit order. The pornography sites. Uh, well known that um, uh, Pornhub, okay, is run by a Jesuit. Okay? A Jesuit. And, and remember, according to the Jesuit, you go through their little hoops and things, uh, you're not a high-ranking Jesuit like with gang members. Okay, uh, if you're beaten, you're looked at with more respect. 
if you come in by some unscrupulous other way, use your imagination, you're not looked at as a full-blooded gang member, but you're still associated with the gang. Okay, uh, individual goes through Jesuit education, the Jesuit will consider them a Jesuit. Okay, kind of like what uh, Jerk Hiles did with the easy believism. You know, say a quick prayer. If you believe this, everybody, raise your hand. And it's like one, two, three, four. Oh, we saved these many people. No, you just let a hundred people into a false uh, profession and confession of faith, and you're leading them to hell. Which is what sleazy believism does. Okay. This is their time, brethren. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 under verse 6. This is their time. This is their time. They're going to win battles. Our enemies, brethren, they're going to win a lot of battles. But Rome loses. The war, the victory is of the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, or cap, chapter 10, verses 4 and verse 6. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. And as we talked about last week, the weapons of Satan are all fleshly, carnal. With guys trying to uh, take on the persona of someone else to a bombastic display of theater. It's all visual. It's carnal, fleshly, driven by flesh, motivated by flesh, operated by flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Strongholds. What are these strongholds? Casting down imaginations, things in the brain, things in the mind. Look at look again, look at these guys. Look at these guys. Look at these guys in this comment section. Okay? Look at the comments on that video. Okay? Look at them. These are people that are carnal. Alright? Not all of them. Not all of them. Okay? But deceived people. They have these uh, strongholds, strongholds, strongholds of Rome, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ and having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Meaning, get saved. Go to the way, go the way that the Lord has prescribed the chosen elect way of the cross, which is death to self, contrition, fear the Lord, call upon his name, and he save you. But see, Rome boots the door, and the Lord Jesus Christ is the door, by the way. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay? But Rome boots the door and climbs up some other way. Thieves and robbers, man. Second Corinthians, while we're here, chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 5, which we address also in another video, but we're just going to read through it here because we can. Verses 1 on to verse 5. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renowned the hidden things of dishonesty. Dishonesty! Rome, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Wow! Wow! You talk about handling the word of God deceitfully, Roman Catholic. That one dude, Star Steel, or whatever his name is, you know, on, uh, the, upon this rock, I will build my church. Handling, why, why do you think that? Because Rome handles the word of God deceitfully. Dude, I pity you. I really do. Because you probably, you're either doing that for shock value, which is possible, or you actually really believe that. If you really believe that, you, 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 you're in trouble. You've got problems. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, meaning we walk our talk, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But, if our gospel be hid, 
It is said to them that are lost. I don't want to hear it. In whom the God, the G of this world, hath blinded the minds. The minds, not the eyes. Because it, it's carnal. You got to be able to see it to believe it, right? You walk by faith, not by sight, pal. That's why I was kind of really harsh on that one twit. Um, you know, the one twit uh, who looks like the guy from Dudley Do-Right. That's why I was kind of hard on him. <laughs> not to mention the fact that I don't like him. But anyway, okay? But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Oh, these guys, they believe. But what Jesus do you believe in, buddy? Yeah. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. Ephesians 2, verses 1 under verse 4. Ephesians 2, verses 1 under verse 4. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past he walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, that's Satan, Lucifer, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. And we're reading to verse 3, not verse 4. Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Prince the power of the air, that's Satan. You Catholics, you are in the church of Satan. And you atheists are just a byproduct of yea hath God said. And you don't want the truth. You want to believe in a lie? Lord will, Lord's obliging you, Catholic. I wish it wasn't the case. I wish some of the saints had some of your uh, zeal for the Lord that you guys have for Satan. Wow. And that's a shame. Shame on the body of Christ for those brethren who don't have any zeal. There are those that exist. Shame on you. you go to heaven when you die. But um, anyway, Mark 10, verses 17 on to verse 27. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running. Running. I want to get that. I got to get me some of that. My time to find favor. My time to be blessed. There came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good, look at that, that's capital G. Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Now, stop. What did Jesus mean by that? This young ruler dude had did not have, even though he could see the Lord, he did not have eyes to see to recognize that that was the Messiah, God the Father in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Thank you. Okay? Uh, they didn't have the, he didn't have the eyes to see. He only saw a meal ticket. He only saw someone who can give him his best life now. Right? Yeah. He didn't have the eyes to see. He didn't recognize that that was the son of David. The Mashiach. Okay? So the Lord's like, why are you calling me good? You don't, you don't want to know who I am. Prove that to you. Let's keep reading. And what does the Lord do? It's like, okay, I'm the Father. I'm, I'm your Messiah. But you don't see me as such. Why are you calling me good then? He's God the Father. But see, he's kind of trying to smooch up to him. The, uh, the rich young ruler dude. Okay? And Lord, 
Look at how he responds. Thou knowest the commandments. <laughs> there are Catholics out there who are actually versed in this and know what the satanic uh, Catholic commandments are. And they're not the commandments of Scripture because remember, they take out one so they can uh, justify just as if I um, worshiping idols. A veneration, uh, whatever. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, capital M, all these have I observed from my youth. And like what our Lord does, which is why hardly any of you want to read the scriptures, because this is what our Lord does when you seek him through the scriptures, the only way to seek him. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, It's okay, God loves you. I'm not angry at you. Everything is, we're going to have a big old time. Give me a pro. One thing thou lackest. Puts the finger on that one thing every time. That's why a lot of you guys, well, I can't understand the scriptures. You can understand well enough that in Romans 3, especially verses 10 on to verse 18, that you ain't good. We, we, we demonstrated that last Friday. Okay, uh, Not last Friday, the Friday before last. Uh, we when we had a relative in the house, uh, it's like <laughs> it's like now you can understand that, can't you? I did, and he's like, yeah, I understand that. <laughs> like, I know you do. You can't understand it. You don't want to understand. It. See, the Lord loved him by telling him truth. It's like that one finger. He put his finger on that one thing. One thing thou lackest. Go thy well way. Sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come take up the cross and follow me. Now, Christ had yet to die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures. Doctrinally, the law is still binding. Faith and works. Yes, instruction and righteousness is why we are looking at this. Okay? All right? So, what did the rich young ruler value above the Lord? Everything. <laughs> Everything else. Everything else. Prove it, okay? And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. Why don't you come home to the one holy apostolic church? We, we are the biggest church in the world. The church that Christ founded. <laughs> And Jesus looked round about and saith unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? Not many mighty, not many noble, not many wise are called. Why? Because they have more that they can get tripped up on. Okay? But see, when you have riches, you can be distracted a lot easier than someone who is poor and needy. Okay? And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answereth him, answereth again, and saith unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? This is a reference unto the spiritual, not the kingdom of heaven. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. So, and reference onto the spiritual, when you hold in high esteem the things that be of flesh, carnal, the things that be of men, you are of your father the devil. And all this will he give you. If you fall down and worship him, right? And Jesus, and, and they were, verse 26, and they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, who then can be saved? And undeniable truth here. Undeniable truth. And Jesus looking upon them saith, With men it is impossible. With men. Flesh. Flesh it's impossible. 
That's why Rome is doomed to fail. That's why um, uh, Catholicism, Calvinism, uh, Free Graceism, Mormonism, Jehoism, okay, Rockmanism, all the isms are doomed to fail. Because it's of men. It's flesh. It's carnal. But not with God. For with God, all things are possible. Amen, amen. And uh, what, what was this individual's name again? Um, oh, I got to beg your pardon. I can't see it. Uh, uh, yeah. Kind Steel 5. Stop that. Kind Steel 5. Huh? Kind Steel 5. Okay. Kind Steel 5. All right. You said that I will submit. <laughs> no, no. Uh, kind Steel 5, whether or not you say that for shock value or you actually mean it, uh, you ought to read what you call lies, the authorized version, number one, but also Fox's Book of Martyrs, which you call, you know, it's lies. Yeah. Revelation chapter 18, verses 1. On to verse 10. Rome loses. Roman Catholicism loses. Roman Catholicism, the Vatican, loses. Revelation 18, verses 1 and verse 10. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great has fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Babylon, not actual geographic Babylon. Catholicism is the perfection of the Babylon, Babylonian religion. Okay? And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich, rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Again, leaders aren't going to America to meet smoking Joe. They're not going to the head of Rabbi. They're not even going to the house of Saud. They go to who? Rome! And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Dear friends, star, whatever your name, star, steel, five, get out of Rome. Your church loses. Your church is Satan's church, boy. Mr. Big Boss. Your church loses. Your religion loses. Your little G God loses. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her, her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double, according to her works, in the cup which she hath filled, filled to her double. How much she hath glorified herself. And live deliciously. Look at how, how the popes, how the Vatican is doing, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and I and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her, shall her plagues come in one day death and mourning and famine and she shall be utterly burned with fire for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning standing afar off for the fear of her torment saying alas Alas, that great city Babylon, that's not Jerusalem, it's not the actual city of Babylon, it's the Vatican. Because Catholicism is the perfection of the Babylonian religion. 
standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for one hour thy judgment is coming. That is going to be it for this little video. Thank you for watching this if you do. I hope you do. And dear Catholics, dear Catholics, I, I, I truly hope that you consider these things and get, get a scripture. Get a set of the scriptures, the authorized version. Stay away from your Jesuit priest, okay? And search the scriptures daily yourself, whether these things are so. Catholic. Rome loses. Your religion will be destroyed. So will your church, and so will your God. Let us reason together, you and I, okay? That's all I got to say about that.